welcome back CU Talks Network. This is Emily Johnston, head of the short-term missions office at Cornerstone University, where today we will be hearing from Dr. Luke Draylin, an expert in the field of cross-cultural communication. It's a pleasure to be here with you today, Emily. So, Dr. Draylin, please tell me about yourself. You have been on multiple short-term mission trips and have done extensive research in the field of nonverbal cross-cultural communication. How important is it that students receive nonverbal communication training prior to leaving for a trip? It is essential that students who wish to go on short-term missions learn about nonverbal cues in the culture in which they are going to be putting themselves in. Students should receive as much training as needed to understand what the nonverbal markers mean in that culture. It is first important that students know the verbal markers in their own culture so they have some idea of what they'll be looking for. For the following experiment conducted in a classroom will show the importance of nonverbal interpretation. An experiment was conducted with nine undergrad psych classes at two universities, the University of Alabama, Rutgers University, in a class that ranged from 15 to 55 people. Classes were diverse, with four of them having 30 to 50 percent of students with ethnic minority, and one class was mostly non-traditional students. The exercise starts with, student, with putting students in a pair as one would be interviewed and the other as the interviewee. Students are encouraged to do this with others that they do not know well. The, student, the interviewers are to keep the questions surface level as much as the reactions such as interests, hobbies, music, books, major hometowns, school vacations. To reduce the likelihood of more reserved students being interviewees as a disproportionate rate, they randomly assigned one group as the interviewers. This shows the objective, the objectivity in this experiment. Um, they are to complete the interview in three to five minutes and interviewees are told to answer all questions honestly. However, they are to do everything they can to suggest that they are not listening or being attentive to those questions being asked. After the interview, interviewers said that I was frustrated by the behavior of my interviewee and that this was the longest four minutes of my life. Interviewers said that they displayed inattentiveness by turning their bodies away, playing with their pen, and bouncing their knee up and down. There are two patterns of the interviewee that are of high relevance to this lesson. A, major, a large majority of nonverbal responses, and in all eight classes, lack of eye contact was the first or second technique that interviewees mentioned that were used to not listen. After the experiment was concluded, students were told to write responses to some of the questions asked regarding the experiment. One student in response to eye contact said, I had a hard time maintaining eye contact because, my, because in my culture, we will not teach to, to, do, to make eye contact. I still hesitate to do so because in my culture, it shows aggression. Wow, that's really interesting, Dr. Drayling. Tell me more about this study. Another aspect of the experiment was that the students, instead of being lectured, were teaching each other by being engaged one another. A number of students showed positivity towards regarding this method because they um, indicated that he, or she, that he or she learned better through hands-on. This shows that the methods of learning nonverbal communication should not just be lectured, but various activities should be implemented to get the students actually acting out various situations involving nonverbals. This activity implements that very well. I, I think that this experiment shows that our culture's way of doing things may not necessarily be another culture's way of doing things. This experiment helps a person be aware of how their cultural culture perceives nonverbals, which then helps a person going into another culture be aware of other nonverbal cues that he or she may not be familiar with. While in America it is important to maintain eye contact with person in conversation, that may not be so in another culture. So yes, students should receive a nonverbal training before they go into another country on a mission trip. However, that training should include engagement with the students and not just lectures. The brain needs interaction and understand to remember what's going on. This video shows common misunderstood nonverbal cues across cultures that should be noted if a student is traveling to a different culture. Hand jive. The top seven common American hand gestures that can get you in trouble abroad. In the U.S., the thumbs up sign means well done, or is commonly used by hitchhikers. But don't use it in Greece, Russia, Sardinia, or West Africa, because you'll be insulting the recipient with a hearty up yours. Many people use this sign to denote victory or peace in America. But use it in Great Britain, Australia, Ireland, or New Zealand, 
and you'll basically be dropping the F-bomb. Be careful with this. In the U.S., this sign means everything is hunky-dory. But in Russia, Brazil, Turkey, and the Mediterranean, it means something very different. Something along the lines of, you are a homosexual. In France and Belgium, it means the recipient is a worthless zero. If you're in Greece, don't tell someone to stop by also holding up your hand, palm out, and all five fingers at attention. You'd be telling them to go straight to hell. Jenna Bush was televised flashing this symbol in Norway to show her pride for Texas, not realizing that she was inadvertently telling the entire Mediterranean that their spouses were being unfaithful. The sign means cuckold and is popular in Spain, Portugal, Greece, Colombia, Brazil, Albania, and Slovakia. If you go to the Philippines, whatever you do, don't tell someone to come here by curling your finger forward and motioning repeatedly unless you want to get arrested. It's considered to be a gesture befitting only usage on a dog and is punishable with jail time if used on a person. Placing both hands out, palms down, fingers outstretched to settle a crowd or to tell people to wait is commonplace in the U.S. But in Greece, it means each So be careful using those seven hand gestures abroad. For more information, please visit www.pimslerapproach.com the leaders in audio-based language learning. Wow, those are some impressive results. So tell me, Dr. Drayling, are there any current training methods that show the benefits towards communicating cross-culturally? Yes, there are. But before you look at in, into those methods, you must first understand that there are five dimensions of cultural behavior. An expert in the field, Hofstede, presents a, start, a starting point with his theory of cultural dimensions that defines culture as a five-dimensional concept and relates positions of the dimension to the certain behavior. Exam Table one gives an overview of behavior patterns that according to Hofstede are related to high and low values on the cultural dimensions. For instance, in collectivistic cultures, high and low identity dimensions, people tend to speak softer and stand closer together in interpersonal, in interpersonal encounters, whereas in individualistic cultures, high on identity dimension, people tend to do the opposite, speak louder and stand further apart from interper interpersonal encounters. The five dimen dimensions have the following meanings. Hierarchy describes the degree in which different distribution of power in a culture is accepted by less powerful members, ranges from low power, dis to low power distance to high power distance. Identity describes the degree to which I Individuals are integrated into groups, ranging from individualistic to collectivistic. Uh, gender describes the distribution of roles between the genders, ranging from feminine to, to masculine. Uncertain, uncertainty describes the tolerance for uncertainty and amb ambiguity, ranging from tolerance to avoidance. Orientation distinguishes between long and short-term orientation, where long-term orientation is associated with thrift and perseverance, whereas short-term orientation is associated with, res res with respect for tradition, fulfilling social obligations, and saving one's face. As Table 1 exemplifies with the dimensional model, it becomes possible to predict behavioral tendencies based on the position of the culture in the five-dimensional space. A tool used for training is called GAME which uses the methodology of interactive culture for an app on your iPhone, which is aimed at providing the means to train gestures anytime, anywhere in role-playing fo following suggestions by Hofstede, who describes three steps of intercultural training as awareness, knowledge, and skills. Uh, awareness th is, the is the first step of gaining intercultural competence. Competence. It is being aware and accepting that there are differences in behavior. The hardest part of this learning step is to accept that there is no better or worse ways of behaving, and especially that one's behavior routines are not superior to others. To realize this step in learning a system with virtual agents, the trainee is confronted with a group of characters displayed with the behavior routines of the target culture. With this knowledge of the trainee's cultural background, the agents could also contrast their behavior of the target with the culture, with the behavior of the trainee's culture. Comparing the behavior patterns with the trainee recognizes that there are differences but might not be able to pin them down. Knowledge is the second step, and the trainee's knowledge is of exactly what is the culture's behavior 
is increased, which can be interpreted as getting an intellectual grasp on what, on where and how one's behavior differs. For instance, the trainee might have felt a little bit uncomfortable in step one due to the different patterns of gaze behavior. In step two, he will gain the knowledge of how his patterns differ from the patterns of target culture and what the con consequences are. In learning the system, in the learning system, the user is confronted with reactions to his behavior by the interlocutors. For instance, the agents could move away if the user came too close. Moreover, the agents could replace replay specific behavior routines of the user and contrast them with the behavior routines of the target culture, pointing out where exactly the user behavior deviates from the target culture. The uh, Hofstede argues that the first two steps are sufficient to avoid most of the obvious blurs of intercultural communication. In the, if the trainee has an ambition to blend into the target culture and adapt his behavior, a third step is necessary, the training of specific nonverbal communication skills. If, for example, avoiding eye contact in negotiations is interpreted as a sign of disinterest in a target culture, it might be a good idea to train sustained eye contact for such scenarios. Again, virtual characteristics can play a vital role in this learning step due to the features. After analyzing whether this method of cultural training was effective, further analysis of the results reveals that there seem to be hard gestures for which the, for which the movement is not easy to grasp, but nevertheless profit from the use of experience-based approach. This refers to the go-on gestures that was uh, rated significantly better with the experience-based approach, but still was rated below average. The first step of evaluation revealed another interesting result that is worth pursuing after. Both groups, for example, test and control, played the game scenario, the visit. The test group, as part of the gesture training, the, con the test group, as part of the gesture training, the, tra the control group after the training sessions and recording of the gesture performance, what, it, what is evident for the log files is that CG outperformers TG in term in terms of successful scenarios interactions. Thus, the mix of different materials and the repetition seem to be beneficial to CG for employing the gestures in a concrete scenario. The overall conclusion from the results is that the experience-based training has great potential as a means to try out and train gestural performance, i.e. to example to serve knowledge and training skills. Wow, that sounds like I need to download that app for my students this upcoming J terms to India. How does a better understanding with nonverbal cross-cultural cross communication help influence our world for Christ? Great question, Emily. As followers of Christ, we are called to go into other nations and cultures by the Great Commission in Matthew 28 in order to most effectively spread the gospel to cultures and that are different from our own. We must learn how to fully communicate with them. Communication requires both verbal and nonverbal communication. Well, that wraps up our show today, folks. Thank you for listening to CU Talks with Dr. Luke Draylin. Join us next time where we will be interviewing climate control expert Dr. John Spivey about Quincers Hall, radioactive cockroaches.